Hello and welcome back. This is Jennifer and I'm glad you're here. Now this is a video I started a couple months ago and I'm just now finishing and sharing with you. Now in this I'm sharing some creative ways to get new looks from your solid or larger stamps. By doing a few simple things, you can step up these images and give them the look of dimension or added detail. I do share some other ideas such as how to use a background die for a card bigger than it's intended. And at the end, I have a bonus card that shows a simple way to include a gift card on the front of a card. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you may have heard me mention that sometimes I struggle to come up with unique color combinations, something different than what I always use. So I was really excited when I saw this ink line from Pigment Craft Company. Now, this is their complete collection as of now and look at the beautiful unique colors they're like a muted but bold color and it goes from super light to super dark i feel like these complement the other inks i already have which are mostly brighter kind of colors and really fills in some open spaces now these are foam pads not felt pad now they are dye ink but they're the newer foam pad that companies are coming out with more and more. Concord and Ninth has some. Simon Says Stamp has their saturated ink in this and a few other companies. These do stamp well. I do find that reinkers are good to have with this type of pad. And I just absolutely love the colors they have to offer. You can see in many of the colors, they have a light, medium, dark, and often extra dark that work well together. But with this type of dye ink, I really feel like you can double or triple stamp to make a color darker. So you could just pick and choose a few colors you like and work with that. The reason I wanted to show you these inks today is because I think it's a really cool approach that Pigment Craft Company took here to come out with these unique colors as their first inks. Usually when an ink, a stamp company comes out with inks, they start with the rainbow and build from there. This company decided to do like their unique color palette they often use. And I thought that was great because it pushed me to try some do, new color combinations and I loved the results. So I just wanted to share that with you. I also am very impressed with the greens they have. They have some more forest greens, some more like um, uh, evergreen colors, just a lot of different greens. And if you're like me and like to stamp a lot of leaves and floral images, the greens are always handy to have. So I just wanted to show you these. I did stamp all of these swatches for you to see the different color. And I do have the free ink swatch download in case you want to make your own. And that's over in the download section on my website. I do have those for all the different inks out there. Okay, so these are the inks that I'll be focusing on today. And I'm letting these inks dictate the colors of my cards and I ended up loving them. I think these can be used all year round. Let's get started with four cards. Now, two of these cards are just solid stamping and two of them have blended solid stamping. This is a great way to take large solid images and give them the look of dimension. I'll be using this Pigment Craft Company Modern Poinsettia stamp set. This is an amazing stamp set that allows you to build a really big image that's great on cards, scrapbook pages, or even to decorate a gift box. Now, although it's a poinsettia for the holidays, I think you could change up the colors and make it work for the spring, summer, and fall also. I used the large coordinating die for the bouquet or arrangement, and I cut it a bunch of times from white cardstock so I could do a lot of stamping at once. I have my Misty stamping tool, and I'm putting inside of that a sticky mat. This will just help with me doing multiple stamping. I find a sticky mat a helpful tool. I just cut it down to fit the Misty. I have one of the negative spaces from our large die cut, and I'm putting that right onto the sticky mat. Then I will take my first die cut and pop it into place. The sticky mat will kind of hold it there as we do our stamping. Now for the first set of flowers, I'm using blush and rosewood from Pigment Craft Company. And then I'm also going to use some of the jade and fur. Those are a nice kind of a little bit bluish green color. And for a more true green color, I'm using fiscus and monstera. I'm starting with this large image. It has all of the leaves connected, which is one of the reasons I really like this stamp set. All of the leaves are connected so you can stamp them all at once and then we'll add the flower after. 
So this is kind of a building stamp set, which allows you to have some flexibility and it doesn't take long. But instead of stamping all of the leaves with the same color, I'm just going to stamp each leaf a different color. Now this allows me to have a little more interest to the image, but because they all line up at once, it saves me the time of having to line up individual images. So I'm starting with one of the greens and stamping one of the leaves. And in this case, I will be double stamping sometimes just to make the image darker. I really wanted to have a bold look on these cards, but you definitely could stamp once with these inks and just give it some time to dry and smooth out. Now I'm inking up the other leaves and just using a piece of scrap paper to kind of mask off this stamped image I've already done. So I'll stamp these in two different greens and this one up here I'll do light. I ended up thinking it was a little bit too light so I double stamped it just to make it a bit darker. So now I was able to quickly stamp all of these different colors, their position just right onto our die cut and now I can add the flower. So this is one solid image. There is a little image for the inside of the flower, but the floral part itself, the petals, is one solid image. Now I'm inking this up with the rosewood color and I use my pressure tool to really press that down because I, it is such a large image. It may look like I have two tone there, but that's just because my stamp was dirty from some practice runs I did. And now I'm lining up the center and using one of those gold colors and stamping that right in the center. In the stamp set, there is also this one image that stamps all of these little buds for over on the side. And then there are also some leaves that you can build on to the leaves you already have. So to add the little details to them, you could totally skip this if you want and just leave it white. But if you want to, you can do gold heat embossing or darker stamping, anything you want. Now I am doing one at a time here, one flower image at a time. But if you want to save time, you could do multiples of these. So do all of the leaves first on a bunch of die cuts, then all of the floral part next. Totally up to you how you do this. I'm going to have four different floral images and I'm going to show you how to step this up in a moment. But first I added those detail images from the set and I'm stamping those with Versamark ink and then gold heat embossing just to add a bit of sparkle. Since I'm doing heat embossing, I'm using my anti-static powder tool from Rabbit Hole Designs. This is definitely my new favorite anti-static powder tool. I love it and it's back in stock. Highly recommend it. And then I did my stamping and my heat embossing. So this image looks lovely as is, but I thought I would show you how you can blend color on your stamps to give the look of dimension to kind of step up that image. So I'm using the same colors of ink as before, and I'm stamping with the lighter color first. So I've stamped these two with the light. But next I'm bringing in the darker color and using a blending brush to add that ink onto the same images. So you'll see I kind of dab it and move it around. So I'm blending the ink onto my stamp instead of onto the paper. And that will give us the look of dimension on our leaves. So there'll be some darker areas there towards the center where the flower will be. So it gives a look of a shadow. This is a great technique with any inks you have and any blending brushes. And it really steps up these larger solid like images. And by applying that darker ink with a blending brush onto the stamp, you get more of a blended stamped result instead of harsh lines. Now this time I used a really light green to start with. It was actually Concord and Ninth Sprout. I like to mix in some other colors to this too. And now I'm coming in with the Fiscus color and just applying that towards the center. So I have those very light tips and the darker towards the center. Now this technique is very obvious with the floral image. I'm starting with that lightest color first and I double stamped it just to make it a bit darker. Now I'm coming in with Rosewood and blending that onto my stamp. You can either go in a swirling motion or a tapping motion. Notice that I'm doing this a few times to really intensify the difference between the tips of the flower and the center. But if you want a more subtle look, just do it once or twice. So if you have any larger images or images that have solid area, this is a great technique to really change the look and give that look of dimension. Now I also did a little bit of the darker yellow on the center of the flower and a little bit on the buds too. So it does work on those smaller images also. 
As before, I added the other pieces from the stamp set to do the gold embossing just for the added detail, and then we'll heat set that. So let's take a comparison between the regular stamping we did on the first one and this one where we blended on additional ink. So the regular one is on the left and the one where we did additional blended ink is on the right. And look how that really stands out more. You get that beautiful uh, little gradient of color on the leaves and the petals, which I just really think steps up the stamping. So over here on the left are the ones you just saw me do. On the top is just the solid stamping. On the bottom is where we did the blending of the ink on the stamp. Then I did the two more on the right at the top is solid and on the bottom has some of the blended ink. Now on those two on the right, I didn't add the gold details to the leaves. I skipped that part just for a different look. I like the white outline details also. For the two on the right, I used the same colors, but I added in a little bit of fresh peach from Hero Arts. It's a little bit brighter peach so that it would just stand out a bit more. But again, I used the same greens and yellows, and I just really like these color palettes. Thanks to the design of the stamp set, these were easy to pull together, and it's just one large piece that I can add to my cards. Okay, so now I thought it'd be fun to have this large piece kind of hang off the edge of a card. So I'm making a mini slimline card, but the piece will hang over it. So I'll put it in a five by seven envelope. But I wanted to show you how you could take a regular background die meant for an A2 card and use it on a mini slimline card as we're doing today. This works with any background die that doesn't have an outside cutting edge. And I have three examples for you today. First, I have the Pigment Craft Company Snowflake Cover Plate Die. This cuts a great pattern, but no outside edge. In another video, I'll show you how to do this if it does cut an outside edge. Now I have a piece of cardstock that is eight and a half by four and a quarter, bigger than I need, and I'm taping my die onto one end of it, and I'll run it through my die cut machine. Any die cut machine will work. Then I will take the die off and I will run it through on the other end, but I want to make sure that the pattern of the die lines up with what we've already cut. So I'm taking the die and I'm popping it in place, overlapping with the last row of like a, that snowflake pattern. So I'll just pop it right in place. It fits like a puzzle piece, tape it in, and now run it through again. And what I'll end up with is this large piece with the pattern cut continually along it. So this is four and a quarter by eight and a half. You could actually do it longer than that if you have bigger paper. And this allows me to use this A2 die on either a slimline or mini slimline card. Now I'm using my Spellbinders tool in one to knock all those pieces out of the hole. I like to lay it onto a cloth when I do that. And then I can shake all those pieces into my trash can. This is a great way to pop out those pieces quickly. I'm using the Simon Says Stamp mini slimline die set to cut a panel from this. I like to use rectangle dies to do this instead of my trimmer so I can make sure this pattern is centered for when we add it to our card. This will cut the piece down to I think three and a quarter by six inches. And look at that beautiful pattern. Okay, now I thought I would demonstrate this again with another background die. This is also from Pigment Craft Company. It's the tile cover plate die. This again doesn't have an outside cutting edge. If your die has an outside cutting edge, you have to get creative with partial die cutting, but with no outside cutting edge, it's easy to do. Okay, so I'm popping that in place over part of what we've already cu cut so that the pattern continues. Run that through my die cut machine and look at this large background. I will again use a mini slimline rectangle die to cut out the portion I need. And then finally, I used the Pigment Craft Company's eyelet cover plate die to do the same thing. Did the exact same technique, cut this large piece, and then used the mini slimline die to cut out the portion I wanted. And now I have these three backgrounds that are for mini slimline card, so a six and a quarter inch tall card, even though the cutting plate was much smaller. Okay, now that we have our backgrounds done, let's pick a sentiment. For two of my cards, I'm using this Dashing Sentiment Stamp Set and Coordinating Dies. I've used these in a video before. I'll link to that in the top right. And then I'd also thought I'd make two of them holiday cards using Wishing You Joy from this Fa La La Stamp Set. I like that there are coordinating dies to cut out the sentiments. So using all of these pieces, I was able to assemble these four cards. 
Again, the size of the note card is three and a half by six and a quarter inches. And I made the note cards out of Gina K. Barely There cardstock, which is a soft, soft peach. I thought that matched the flowers nicely. Onto the front of the cards, I glued one of our die cut backgrounds, the mini slimline ones I just created. And then I glued one of our big floral die cuts to hang off the edge. I also added the sentiment and a few white pearls for an accent. I like that this card has pieces hanging off and then I can just mail it in a five by seven envelope. This card has one where we did the ink blending on the stamp so we could have that gradient of color on our images. This one on the right is where we just did solid basic stamping. I do feel like the one on the left just really stands out more, but you could definitely keep it solid if you prefer. All right, the other two, I just added a hello sentiment that's stamped and die cut using the dashing sentiment set I showed you. Again, these are the same size. This one on the left in, the, in my hand here is the one where we did the blended ink. And I did a lot of contrast on those leaves, but I really think it makes it stand out. And the one on my desk on the right is the one with the solid one color stamping. Now, I think you could make this a summer or spring card by doing the flower and maybe a pink or a yellow and doing like a brighter lime green for the leaves. So you can get creative with stamp sets that may have been meant for fall or winter, but use them in the summer and spring. Okay, now let's do another idea for taking your solid stamp images and changing them up. This time I'm adding detail using a stylus. This is one of my favorite all time techniques. In fact, I have done a video showing variations of this technique and I'll link to that up here on the top right if you want to learn more. Okay, so for these two cards, I'm using the Pigment Craft Company Berry Springs stamp set. I saw this and I just had to buy it because I think it's such a small, inexpensive set that could be used in so many ways. I start by stamping a solid image with a light ink. So here I'm using a light green color. And I'll actually rotate my cardstock and stamp it again so I can do two images at once. Now I'll ink up the same exact stamp, I haven't moved it at all, with a darker green color. But instead of just stamping it solid, I'm going to add some detail to this image. I use a stylus to do this. You can also use a toothpick. I just draw a line with the end of my stylus and wipe the ink off onto a dry cloth. So I'm actually removing a line of ink from each of those leaves. So this is a pretty solid, plain leaf, but by adding that line, it gives a little detail. And you could add much more detail if you want. Again, I'll show lots of ideas for that in that other video. You could skip stamping that light colored base if you wanted to, but I feel like it gives better results. And I find that if you wipe off the tip of your stylus every once in a while, you can make sure that you get a clean line. Now this time, I thought I'd add even more detail to the leaf. So I do, did more lines, and look at that. It looks like the stamp was intended to give that result. So I'm doing a bunch of leaves here so that I have lots, even more than I need for my two cards, to create large arrangements on the front of my cards. I was inspired by this line of stamps to do some bigger, bold images on my cards, and these solid images are great for techniques like this that allow you to get a little more creative. Now this time, instead of drawing lines, I thought I'd do little dots. And this will play into the dot background and the dots I do in the berries on one of my cards. So this just adds a different type of detail to it. Now I do want to mention that I have been working on this video for a while. I started it back in the beginning of October. I told Pigment Craft Company I'd be doing a video. I had bought a bunch of it fell in love with it, told her I was going to do a video, and then some things happened in my family and I had to take some time off. So I'm just now finishing and putting this out. I appreciate the patience uh, that they've had for me and do understand that some of these products have been sold out, but that's my fault because I waited to post. So I apologize for that. You can always get the notification when some of these supplies are back in. Some things are in stock still, but a few of them are sold out. So Know that companies are having a hard time getting supplies in quickly because of manufacturing issues, but know that everybody is trying. Okay, so now I'm doing the same thing with the berries. I'm adding little dots to the solid berry so that it just adds a little bit of detail. So I stamp first with the lighter color, then I come in with the darker color and ink that up and do little dots with the tip of my stylus 
just kind of around the focal point of the berry and stamp that down. So now what used to be solid images have some detail. Next, I wanted to create some stamped and die cut ribbon pieces to add to the clusters on my cards. Now for this, I'm using a small stamp set and coordinating die set from Pigment Craft Company. This will actually be on my favorites list for this year because I think it does a great job and can be used on a card many ways. I'm using it just as part of these little bouquets that I'm creating or these clusters, but you could use them on a wreath, on the top of a package, many ways you can use it. So I start by die cutting first. This is another one of those stamp sets where you build images together. So by die cutting first, you can easily figure out where each stamp goes to build this little ribbon cluster or this, this bow. I'm using the two gold colors that are in this Pigment Craft Company ink collection. And I thought this looked like the perfect gold bow to put on my bouquet. I also did a bunch in red, so I have those ready to go too. Now, along with this large bow at the top, there are the two little like uh, string bows that also come in the stamp set. And I stamped those with the same colors also. Now, as I mentioned, I wanted to go bold on these. So I wanted some giant leaves for the background too. And we'll add some detail to this. This is the Pigment Craft Company Falling Leaves stamp set. And there are two different coordinating die sets available. One allows you to make shaker leaves if you wanted to. These are huge. This is a six by eight stamp set. This was one of the first sets that I got from Pigment Craft Company. I just thought they were fun and great as a backdrop. Once again, for this detail stamping technique, I'm starting by stamping the solid image with a light color. Then I ink up the same image with a much darker color and use my stylus to add details. Now you could go to town on this and add a lot of detail because this is such a big stamp, but I decided just to do a few dots here and there. Now I'm doing this with another one of the leaves from the same set. I stamp it with the light ink, ink it up with the darker ink, and then add some little dots with the stylus. So you're really not adding anything, you're actually removing some ink with the stylus. After creating three large leaves, I use the coordinating dies to cut them out and I have all of these pieces with a little bit of detail added to them. Now the little detail doesn't make a huge difference in the final card, but it really is fun to be creative and change up your images. For my card, I used the snowflake background die that I showed you earlier and cut from white cardstock. And I glued that onto a top folding white note card. Now I want this note card to be a bit smaller so that I can have pieces of my stamped image hanging off but still fit into a regular envelope. So I cut it, this down to be about three and three quarter inches wide by about five and a quarter inches tall. I then assembled all of those die cuts that we created with the stamping and I assembled them together just using Gina K Connect liquid adhesive and then glued that onto my card, allowing parts to hang off, which I really think is fun to do with card making. I also added a thank you stamped and die cut sentiment from the dashing sentiment stamp set that I showed you earlier. So this, the fun thing about this is I was able to use my large images from a couple different sets creatively, adding little details with the stylus, and then arranging them in a fun way on the front of a card. And there are many different ways you can arrange these. It's just fun to mix and match different sets. And I still have leftover pieces for the second card and additional cards. Now I really like the sentiment on this one. I wanted it to be the focal point with our leftover pieces around it. This is the Pigment Craft Company For You stamp set and die set. This one's been sitting out waiting for me to use and I'm glad to finally use it. Now I just used the dies alone. So I cut For You from glitter cardstock and the shadow from white. But notice this stamp set has all these additional sentiments you can stamp along the images and little doodads you can put around it. So in fact, you could create a really fun one layer card just with the stamp set alone. But know that there are other dies available to coordinate with it. Now for my card again, I just used the dies. I started with gold glitter cardstock, but you'll see I changed my mind and used black glitter cardstock in the end. So I have my die cut sentiment and I'm just gluing our extra die cuts to kind of come out from the top and the bottom. But I'm trying to stay this time inside the constraints of a mini slimline card, which is three and a quarter by six and a quarter here. So that I can put it into a regular envelope. Now I originally, as I said, did gold glitter cardstock, 
changed my mind. I wanted it to stand out more. So I'm just gluing the black glitter cardstock right on top of the gold. Now for the background on this, I wanted to add dots to the background to match with the dot details that I added to the leaves and berries. So I use this Pigment Craft Company Flowering Petals Pattern Stamp Set. Now you can use these together to create a pattern. So you can do the leaves and then the petals together to create a colorful background. I'm just using the dots for dotted background. So I stamped that dotted background image repeatedly with a uh, rosewood color ink on the background. And I like how the dots from that match the dotted detail we did. I could have used that dot stamp to do a kissing technique. That's another technique that's great for solid images like the ones we're using today. And I'll link to a video that demonstrates that. Now here I did also add some gold baubles just for a bit of shine, and I have a craft color mini slimline envelope to go along with it. This would be another good one to change up the colors so you can make a spring card or a summer card also. Okay, now I have a bonus card for you. This has nothing to do with solid stamping, but instead I created a really fun card that holds a gift card. And I just think it's a really well done stamp set, much like that poinsettia one, so I wanted to share it. This is the Pigment Craft Company These Hands Stamp Set. There are many different ways you can stamp these images together. I'm just going to show you one today. There is a coordinating die available to cut out the whole hand scene, but then there are also individual dies if you want to cut out the individual stamped images. So again, you can think about how you plan to use it and go with that. I cut the large die and I'm doing all my stamping onto it, like we did with the modern poinsettia earlier. It's really easy to line up the images that way. So I'm using all of the different ink colors that I showed you before and just building these images. So it's very similar to the modern poinsettia where the images build together very easily to create kind of a modern look. Now this is just basic stamping, so I'm skipping some of the steps, but do know there are many different options for like say the sleeves of these hands uh, in the stamp set, and you can choose what you want. I decided to do the floral pieces and they fit together really easily to create this built up image. I then did the coffee cup in a dark green, but I kept most of my colors here softer than my first examples. I wanted this to end up being kind of a soft image in the end. Now for the steam coming off, I stamped with Simon Says Stamp Fog Ink, which is a super light gray ink. I like that you can stamp it multiple times to make it a bit darker if you want. So check out that final image. I just think it looks so cool. I wanted to have a sentiment strip that matched our stamping perfectly. So I white heat embossed a sentiment from the Hello Autumn stamp set from Pigment Craft Company. I white heat embossed that onto white cardstock, and then I put green ink on top of it the white embossing will resist it and it'll look like I use green paper. And now I know that that will match my card perfectly. I want to have a gift card tucked behind the hand image. So this is how I did it. I created a little slot for it. I die cut a few additional of the hand image. I'm laying a gift card right across the center of that hand image and drawing a pencil line above it and below it. By the way, Graders is an ice cream place. I need to get a Starbucks or local coffee shop gift card instead for this, but I didn't have one on hand. I'm gluing two of these die cuts together, just so there's a bit dimension to it. After they're glued together, I'm cutting along those pencil lines. So I'm cutting away that area in the middle where our gift card will slide in and out. I'll glue these two pieces on the back of our stamped die cut. So again, there's just kind of a little nook taken out of the center of this die cut for the gift card to be. Now you could skip the nook and just kind of slide it behind there and not put glue in that center area, but I feel like this works better. It slides in and out very nicely this way. So now I can glue this onto my card, making sure not to put glue in the center area and then slide the gift card in. This is a fun way to make a gift card gift a little more special. And I added a bit of shine to the steam using my Tonic Aqua Shimmer Pen. Now this note card is Simon Says Stamp Fog cardstock and I used a white die cut for the background and a white insert on the inside. So I did soft stamping here. I think it's fun to do soft stamping. I often don't do it in videos because it's hard to capture the color in video and, and photos, but it is a nice alternative to the bold colors I usually do. 
I plan to share some more ideas for holding gift cards in your handmade card in a video soon. I just think it's a great gift to give. Gift cards are especially good right now because so many uh, stores are out of stock on things. And to make it a little more personal, you can have a handmade card holding it. Okay, so that was just a bonus card, but I hope you like the ideas of stepping up your solid large images by adding blended ink and details with a stylus. If you're interested in the products that I talked about, they're linked below in my YouTube description. And I have linked at the end here the two videos I mentioned throughout this one. Thank you for spending this time with me. Have a wonderful week, and I'll see you again soon with another video.